There are critical changes coming to some TLS CA root certificates for Azure IoT, and that will have an impact if you are connecting devices to Azure IoT. Remit is here to tell us everything you need to know and what you need to do during this migration. This is today on the IoT Show. Hi everyone, you're watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today with Remit, we'll uh, warn you about getting ready for a TLS root CA migration. Remit, how are you today? Hey, Olivier, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. Uh, so I don't want to be um, scaring people off, mm -hmm. but it seems you have some homework for our developers, for our embedded developers in particular, uh, regarding security. So before we get into that, Give us a short introduction of yourself. You already came on the show to give a first warning of these changes coming up, uh, mm -hmm. but tell us a bit more about you know who you are, what team are you working with within Azure IoT, and what are you doing these days? Sure. Uh, thanks, Olivia. First off, thanks thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here again. Um, my name is Ramit Malhotra. I am a program manager in uh, the Azure IoT team. Specifically, uh, I work on the Azure IoT SDKs. Uh, I'm sort of a uh, catch all PM for security. Uh, my job is to ensure that our uh, developers uh, have the most secure experience, in, experience connecting their devices to Azure, as well as to ensure that uh, the tool or vehicle that they're using to connect, which is our SDKs, are also, uh, also have best in class security. That makes sense. So there are several ways you can secure connectivity to Azure IoT. One is using shared access tokens, mm -hmm. and the other one is using certificates. And so, give us a little refresh on that second. That's the that's the method of security se securing that connection that we're going to talk about. So, give us a little refresher about what's going on on that side. Right. So while there there are two ways for the service to authenticate devices. Uh, today, we are going to talk specifically about the way devices authenticate servers on the internet and okay. uh, specifically using certificates. Um, so, so the way this works is that if you have uh, any client, whether it's an IoT device or whether it's a browser, for example, that's trying to connect to any web asset, can be a website, can be a web service, any public facing uh, internet endpoint, uh, the minute it tries to connect, uh, it needs to establish trust. And the way we do this in the modern era is using TLS. Uh, TLS is, is a way for the server and the client to establish this relationship of trust. Uh, now, the client needs to be very sure uh, that it's talking to the right server. So for example, when, when I go to bankofamerica.com, I want to be sure that I'm talking to Bank of America, right? And the way I do that is by examining the certificate that is presented to me uh, when I try and connect to Bank of America. Bank of America sends back a certificate, uh, which is in this diagram, you can see the LEA for N entity certificate. Uh, and then as a client, what I have to do is uh, walk up this chain, uh, get to a point where I find a certificate that I already trust from be before. Typically in the IoT world, that's the root certificate. Um, and when I do get to uh, that root CA that I already trust, I know that you know uh, the due diligence has been done before, uh, that Bank of America is indeed uh, Bank of America uh, is website that I'm talking to, and then trust is established. Now, that is the basis of how clients on the internet establish trust with servers. That's what we want to talk about in today's episode. Awesome. So we want to talk about especially the changes are coming, right? Because um, certificates are great, but they have an exp expiry time, right? So there's some point where this the certificates are no, no longer valid. And that's there's a good reason for that. You don't want a certificate to go out there in the wild. And at some point, you know, you want to be able to renew them. Um, so changes are coming. Give us some more insights into what is this change that are coming? What is it that you're here to warn developers about? Absolutely. So if you remember last time, uh, Olivier, last time when I came on the show, I, I spoke about this uh, this uh, change that is affecting the industry, particularly Microsoft. Now, Microsoft's root chain of trust uh, is, is Baltimore root CA. Uh, what I mean by that is that 
every web asset that Microsoft has, whether it's through Azure, whether it's through web services or websites, uh, all of those websites are protected by this certificate authority or this root, Baltimore root CA. Uh, now, the interesting thing about uh, Baltimore root CA is that it expires like all certificates. It's expiring in, uh, in May of 2025. Uh, now, this expiry poses uh, obviously a lot of interesting questions to companies like Microsoft. And uh, uh, Microsoft has done a lot uh, in the last year or so to get ahead of this problem. Uh, last year, Azure services, most of Azure services, in fact, uh, did get off of Baltimore route onto a different route. Uh, and uh, this happened in response to a compliance incident. Uh, uh, we, we were found, our intermediate certificates were found to have some compliance defect uh, due to which uh, Azure decided that, well, since Baltimore is expiring anyway, it makes sense to just, you know, get off of this chain and, 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 and uh, go on uh, to the new chain that we're going to uh, use going forward. And that chain is called uh, the global G2 route, uh, also by Digicert. And that route expires in 2038. Uh, that route has issued Microsoft two new ICAs. Uh, apologies, I think it's four new ICAs, uh, MS Azure TLS issuing CA one, two, uh, five, and six. And all LEAF certificates, uh, all certificates that will be presented to clients by websites, by web services, by IoT Hub and DPS, for example, in our world, uh, will uh, go, going forward have uh, this chain, which which chains up to Digicert Global G2. Now, if you remember last year, what we did is uh, we, we decided that while most of Azure and most of IoT services will go on to G2, uh, Hub in DPS particularly uh, decided to, to hold off that migration. And that was done primarily for our customers. We, we, we realized that there was not enough time for our customers to understand and, and, and prepare their devices for this migration. So we had, so the warning that you talk about from last year was that, hey, this migration is gonna come up and we're gonna be announcing it uh, sometime this year. And this is that announcement. Uh, so uh, once we do this migration, uh, I, IoT Hub and DPS2 will be changed to uh, the new route that Azure uses, which is the DigiCert Global G2 route. Nice. Okay. So I've seen some different dates in there, uh, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the fact that the Baltimore uh, would see expires in, what, 2025, right? So it gives mm -hmm. us some time here. But here we're introducing changes um, that will allow, you know, the migration would say to be progressive and smooth i guess mm -hmm. right i hope so what's the timeline looking like for uh for developers out there so that they understand when they have to do what absolutely and and that's why i've got this uh, big uh, splatter across the slide which says june 2022 that's when our migration for hub and dps will start in production regions um uh, across azure uh, June 2022 is when we will start, and and I think we will end by some sometime around October 2022. Uh, the detailed timeline for this is 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 uh, is in this slide. Uh, so on May 27th, uh, which was Thursday last week, we we published a blog detailing out this timeline and what customers are expected to do, how they can safeguard their, their, themselves and protect their devices from any disruptions, and how they can get ahead uh, by testing uh, you know, uh, devices with the new, new root certificate against endpoints that we've made available. So what's required today is that everybody needs to go and ensure that the digital global G2 root is in their devices. Now, uh, they could be, this certificate could be present in the operating system certificate store if in case you're using Windows or Linux or something like that in your device. In case you have a custom firmware, then it's possible that the root certificate is either flashed in or is using some other way of, of, of storing it on the device. Whatever the case may be, it's imperative that the G2 certificate is available to the TLS stack that lives on the device. Uh, once you add the G2 certificate, uh, we highly recommend that you validate uh, that the devices are connecting properly uh, with the help of test endpoints that we've made available. And then, of course, uh, the, the biggest action item is to make sure that all your devices in your fleet uh, are ready for this transition before June of 2022. Now, uh, when we do go ahead with this migration, 
there will be a period of four months where uh, the re- the rollout, the production migration is happening region wise, uh, because it's unpredictable which region will get uh, migrated to the new route first. Uh, we we definitely ask uh, all device builders to make sure that the, both the Baltimore route and the G2 route are available to the device, especially for that four month period uh, during transition. It is extremely important that that the, that both the certificates are available because in case Baltimore is, is not, and your uh, region is not, uh, migrated. Has not migrated and rolled over, you're not going to be able to connect. And and that's yeah. why it's super important. Makes sense, makes sense. So. What's the um, what's the short to do list? What are the things that developers can do to to check that they are all green and all good and can sleep safely, right? Right. So uh, before we before I answer that, I I just want to touch upon something that I had uh, emphasized last as well, yep. which is that uh, these things tend to happen, right? Like we we live in a world where certificates uh, expire, they get revoked, they get compromised, and that happens at every level of the certificate chain, not just the LEED for NNED certificates. It could happen to the ICAs, it could happen to the root. Uh, IoT is a world where remote update is most essential. It is essential for us, uh, for all devices, to get ahead of this problem so that in in the event for uh, that we have to change routes or have any change in the PKI, devices don't suffer and retain connectivity to Azure, no matter what uh, changes happens at the service side uh, with regard to the PKI. Now, coming to your question, what are the go-dos? I think I would like to distill this to three things. First is, please add the desert global G2 route. Uh, this needs to be added to all your devices. Now, I've, I've used the word add because it's additive. We do not want to replace the Baltimore route. We want to add to it especially for the transition period. After you add this route, uh, the recommendation is to attempt the TLS connection with test endpoints that are made available. And then once you test, please validate that there is a successful TLS connection. It's extremely important for ensuring that that your devices continue to connect uh, successfully with Azure, that the successful uh, test has has, uh, occurred and that your devices have not broken connectivity. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, this is a major change happening in the PKI, and there's going to be lots of questions, and we are here to help. Uh, so in case uh, customers have any questions, they can go to Azure's, Azure portal, they can open a support request, fill out the details as shown in this slide, and uh, support will, will get back uh, to folks with you know, with answers to, to frequently asked questions, uh, and, uh, and support will obviously also help in testing. So in case you have an enrollment uh, and you want to test the DPS side of things, uh, support will be able to create a test device ID and help you test that enrollment process and and ensure that you're protected uh, from changes in DPS as well as IoT Hub. Nice. So uh, I was uh, I was hearing the song, you know, you are not alone um, <laughs> in that. <laughs> we are, we're definitely here to, uh, to help you out. So um, Ramit, before I let you go, any particular gotcha? Because we're talking about a migration, you know, from a root CA to another one, but mm-hmm. I hear there's something they need to pay even more attention to. Uh, yes, uh, there's good news and bad news. So the bad news is that there are gotchas uh, in, in, any, in any large scale migration like this. We expect uh, some, some amount of uh, special circumstances to exist. For us, there's, uh, the good news is there's only one, uh, which is that this new Digital Global G2 certificate chain is signed with SHA-384, not SHA-256. And why this is important is because uh, we definitely understand that a lot of devices that have already been deployed in the field have, uh, uh, especially constrained devices, have only compiled in SHA-256 libraries. So that means that when you get a certificate signed by, signed by SHA-256, you're able to uh, understand that signature. But if you suddenly get a certificate signed by SHA-384 and you don't have that library compiled in, uh, suddenly you can't understand the signature and therefore TLS breaks. Uh, So that's the gotcha is that when you perform this update, make sure that you have the SHA-384 library compiled in. Uh, And of course, if you have any questions or any concerns uh, regarding this change, you feel feel free to uh, contact support and uh, support will be able to help you and guide you through this this process. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I definitely see that as being something that, especially embedded developers and microcontrollers, were trying to optimize for size, mm -hmm. only put on their firmware exactly what they need. So they have the two fifty six SHA mm -hmm. encryptor and decryptor, but not the, the the other one. So definitely something to pay uh, even more attention to. Absolutely. Permit. Thanks a lot for this, um, Warren. You, you actually mentioned a blog post you put together with all the details, reminder of the dates, and pointers to resources to help you go through that migration. Um, the link is down there. It's actually sliding down there. It's aka.ms slash IoT dash CA dash updates, right? Yes, and, and this blog will have everything that a customer needs uh, to understand what I've spoken about. Uh, including all the certificates that are going out, that are coming in. Uh, so I would say that this is the gospel of truth for everybody. This blog, if, if there's any change with regard to the migration timeline or any other gotchas that we might you know, run into while we are doing this migration together, uh, it will be updated in this blog. So this blog is super important. Perfect, Ramit. Thanks a lot for your time. Everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the IT Show. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.